I love it when a plug-in company releases a product that shakes things up a little, especially when we the consumer benefit from it. Enter Jet Form Builder from Crockerblock. Now at first I thought this was just another free form builder for Gutenberg, but boy was I wrong. Now this isn't a comprehensive tutorial on using the plugin, I've literally only spent about 30 minutes in total with it, but I wanted to share what got me so excited about it after only the first 5 minutes of playing around. Now I will be doing a more comprehensive tutorial on more of the features really really soon, so make sure you are subscribed to be notified when that video is released. Also, why not grab a copy of my free ebook, 10 things to do before launching a WordPress website? There's a link in the description below for you to get that. Okay, so let's get stuck in now and see why I'm so excited about Jet Form Builder from Crockerblock. So this is the new free Jet Form Builder that's available from Crockerblock. Now this to me is one of those things that's a little bit of a game changer for the fact A, it's absolutely free, and B, it works with a lot of dynamic data. That's super cool. So it means that this is kind of firing a shot across the bows of quite a few plugins out there that you pay for. So I want to give you just a really, really, really brief example of some of the things that I like about this. And I've only literally taken a look at this for the last 35, 40 minutes. So this is not going to be some kind of comprehensive tutorial. Kate's already done a fantastic video on the basics of using this. I'll put a link in the description so you can check that out and get a bit more understanding. I really want to just show you why I'm excited about this particular plugin. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to hop over to a site that I've got set up and I'm going to show you just briefly how you create a form and show you some of the options that I think are so useful with this form builder. So when you install it and you log into your dashboard, you're going to have the Jet Forms option. So this works in very similar fashion to most form builders you've seen out there. You can add a new form, you can see all the forms you have created. Let's go and take a look at the forms option. So you can see there's one that I've already created, but let's add something new. So we're going to do this. We're going to give it a name, test for video, just so we can see what I'm working with. Okay, so once we've done this, you can see we have some basic fields inside here. We've got a hidden field, which is the post ID. So this is really useful if you are linking this through to information you already have on your site. Now, even though it says post ID, you're not limited to it just being posts. And we'll see that in a few moments, how many different types of information you can edit using this particular form. And if you tie this into a plugin that allows you to control exactly who can see the pages and who can see the various different sections, that can be really powerful where you can set something up for front end editing for quite a range of different things, and then just lock that away to only specific users or specific user groups. So let's take a quick look at what we have. If we click on one of these fields, you can see we open up our options at the right hand side, like you used to when working with Gutenberg. We can change the form field name if we want to. In this instance, we'll leave it as it is. You have your field settings and inside there we can choose from a lot of different options. Now, this is obviously if you're working inside a post or a page or something like that, or user data, then all these pieces of information are available, even including things like URL, query variables, current date, or manual input. So this example, post ID is exactly what we want. So we'll leave that as it is. Now, to add in any extra fields inside Gutenberg, it's exactly the same as what you're used to. You simply come down, click the plus, and then you can just search for what you want. So we say browse all. You can see if we scroll right the way down, we'll see a different colored section for jet form fields. And as you can see, there are a lot of different field types inside here. Select fields, text fields, the normal things you'd expect. We have a WYSIWYG field, which is super useful. You even have repeater fields. Now, these are things that I will take a look at in more detail once I get a better understanding of how this plugin actually works. This is kind of just like my first look sharing that info with you guys. So what we're going to do is we're going to say we'll add in a WYSIWYG field. And you can see that just drops it in. We now get our options on the right hand side and we're going to give this field label content. The field name we're also going to call content. That's worth bearing in mind when you create your form field name, you need to adhere to the typical ruling, which means that if you have spaces, you have to put underscores in their place. Otherwise, it's not going to work correctly for you. And you'll see if we put a space in and start typing, we can actually input that inside there. So it would be nice to see this automatically replace those spaces if we accidentally put a space in and forget to put that underscore or that dash in. So anyway, I'll leave that set as content. We can drop a field description if you want to. But what I'm more interested in is the default value. We can insert 
manually insert a default value inside here. But we've got the database icon on the right hand side and this is where I think the real power of this free plugin is starting to show. Let's click on there. We can say we can select the source. We open that up, we can choose between post user data and sorry, post data and user data. If we choose post, we can now choose get the post ID from. So this is where that post ID is going to come in. So we'd have this as part of an existing post. You can see we can choose current post or a URL query variable. If we choose that, we can put the variable name in and so on. However, for this, we'll just use current post. And you can see post property, we can say, what are we going to grab from here? So this is going to show all those normal pieces of WordPress data, post ID, post title, content, and so on. So this is the content, the post content. We're going to edit a post. So we're just going to map this field to this data. And that's it. So if you've ever seen anything to do with Jet Engine or a lot of the other plugins like ACF Frontend Forms Pro and so on, we are just linking the data up to the relevant field so it knows where to grab the data from or where to place the data if it's new or you're editing something. So we hit apply on there. We're going to select the text which was already inserted above that. And what we're going to do is we're just going to call this title. Same underneath, we're going to put in title or lowercase. Field description, don't worry about that. Hit the database icon, select post. Current post is fine. And what we're going to do is we're going to set that to be post title. Hit apply. You can kind of see where I'm going with this now. We're creating a front end editing form really, really easily. And again, like I say, in a free plugin, which is awesome. Now, once we've done that, we've created a really simple front end editing setup. We can edit the text for the title and for the content, but we can also add extra fields in if we wanted to if we map those to custom fields, or we can just start keep continuing doing this and adding extra fields in and linking those through to the relevant data. But I don't think I need to show you that. It's pretty self-explanatory. We've just seen it. Your field settings, you can also set field types. So this is for the title at the moment, and you can see text is set on there. But we could set this to be an email, a URL, a password, telephone number, and so on. And then what you can also do is you can set up input masks. So let's just say you'd set this to be a telephone number and you enable the input masks, we can now choose the mask type. Is this going to be a default mask type or is it going to be a date time option? Let's set this to default and then you can see we've got some examples of how we can input the input mask. So you can set this up to make sure that if someone's putting a phone number in, it's going to go in in exactly the right format you need for future use. So that's pretty cool to see. You can also mark visibility. So you can see Mask, sorry, mask visibility, where it's always on hover or on focus. And you can also mask the placeholder and you can see you can drop in the various different sort of symbols you want to use for the mask for that. So people can see what info is going in there. So cool to see we've got an input mask inside here as well. We can also apply custom CSS to this if we want to. We can drop in a CSS class name. We can drop in placeholder information. We can make this multi-page if we wanted to. So we can easily put add previous page buttons and so on. We can mark the field visibility, whether this is for everybody, whether it's only for logged in users or for people that are not logged in. So there's a lot of use cases for where you want to have forms that are available to someone that's not logged in, but hidden from people that are logged in. Or you might have a form that's got data that if you're logged in, it will need that information to be put in there. If you're logged out, you won't see it. You know, you kind of get that picture of what I'm talking about. So that's pretty cool. The other thing that is really, really useful is let's just say, for example, we'll add another field in and we're just going to put a text field in. So let's do text and we'll insert a text field. We'll move that up and we'll just say this is going to be the user, for example. So we'll just put user inside here or user's name, for example, and we'll just put name. OK, I'll leave that as it is. Default value. Let's do the same thing again, but this time we're going to choose user and you can see current user or again, we can use that URL query variable. So as long as someone's logged in, you can set the user field and you can map that to their first name, for example, or any of the other data that's inside there and hit apply. And then what you could do is you can specify that this particular field is only going to be available to logged in users. So field visibility is going to be only logged in users. So if you're logged in, your username is already going to, or your first name is going to already be pre-filled in this particular section, speeding up using forms, which is obviously something that from an accessibility point of view and an ease of use point of view is really, really useful. So that's just briefly what I wanted to show you inside you. Now I'm going to show you some other things about how we actually get this form to work. So let me just delete this block. 
Okay, so we've created the form, we've set everything up inside there, mapped all the data. Now if we come over to the right hand side and choose Jet Form, we can now control various other aspects of the form itself. Okay, so we can see the field layout. Do we want to set this to be column or row? And basically column just means that the title is above the text area, the text content and so on, or row means it's to the left hand side of it. Up to you how you want to do that. Required mark, what do you want to use to specify a field is required? We can drop in the typical symbol, which is the little star symbol. And then you can submit time. Do you want to use page reload or Ajax? Now, if you were using this as a front end form to update content on the page, I would recommend using the page reload so it refreshes the data and shows the changes. The Ajax won't do that. So we'll set this to page reload. If you want to use capture settings, recapture, you can enable that, drop in your site key and your secret key. And you've got your post submit actions. And again, this is where the real power of this particular free plugin really starts to show. You can see at the moment it's set to send email. We can expand that and we can say insert update post, register user, update user, call hook, call web hook, redirect a page, even link it up to MailChimp, get response or active campaign. Although I really would like to see MailerLite inside here. So at Crocoblock, if you guys are listening, please add MailerLite. It's awesome, much better than MailChimp. That's just my little thing. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to say insert an update post. Select that option and we can edit that if we want to. And we can say, right, well, what kind of post type is it? Because obviously you can have a normal post, you can have a page, you can have a WooCommerce product, whole range of different things can be post types. Expand that and you can see there's a lot of options inside you, including things like options and orders and so many more things. So I think this is really going to open up a huge array of possibilities of creating really cool front end dashboards. Super excited about this. So we're going to say posts for this example. You post status. We can now specify when someone updates in this example, what's going to happen? Is it going to go into draft? Is it going to pending review, private or published? So obviously, if you're going to have something that makes changes, pending review probably is a good option to switch it over to. So the admin of the site can see what changes have been made. But up to you. We'll just leave that as published for this example. Now we can map the fields. So you can see post ID, title and content, the three fields that we've got. Post ID, post ID. Title, post title, content, post content. Simple as that. Want to add extra options in? You can add those inside here. But we'll just click update. We've now created a form that will update or insert content into our post section. Now, if we wanted to, we can add a second action. So we can say, well, we also want to send an email and you might want to edit that. And the email, where is it going to go to? Admin email, reply to. You can fill all the data out inside you. You can even use macros, little short codes. So you can see we've got post ID, title and content. So we can drop those into the content area. We can use those little macros inside things like from name, from email address and so on. So we can have this really easy to set up to reply to and all those kinds of things just by using those options. You can even inside the content area, you can even use full HTML editing. So if you want to set this up to look great when it comes through on email and you want to style it and do all those things, you can do that inside there as well. Again, super cool to see. We'll cancel that. I'm not too bothered about that side of things and we'll just delete this. And you can see we can reorder those to give them priority, but we'll delete it for now. Okay, so we've seen how to set those things up and we've seen some of the options that are available after the post submit actions. Do you want to enable presets? So this is check this to enable global form presets. If you enable that, you can see we can choose the source, whether it's going to be post data or user data. I'm not really 100% sure what this does just yet. So I need to do a little bit more research into this, but we'll disable that for now. Then you've got all your general messages. So this is what the user will see when a form is submitted successfully, if there's an error, whatever. So you can customize that to make sure it fits everything that you needed to do to make it as user friendly as possible. And that's the basics of creating our form. So now what we're going to do is we're going to publish that. So we've created our form, set up everything we want to do. We can now insert it into our site. Now, because I'm using Gutenberg and I want to insert this into my single post template, I'm using Bloxy theme and part of Bloxy Pro is that I get the option for webhooks. So I've set this up now to inject this into the relevant location underneath my posts. Whatever sort of theme you're using, you might have different ways of inserting this in, but that isn't so important. This is more a case of showing you how this, this plugin works. So with that being said, we're going to add the form in. So I just need to simply search for form and there's our form element. I'm going to drop that inside there. On the right hand side, we just simply need to choose which form we want. So we know this is test for video. 
And you can see now we've got a replica of what we saw when we set this form up. The field layout, columns or rows, required mark, and the submit type. Now it's worth bearing in mind the submit type, if you change that inside here, so it's different to what you set up when you created the form, when you create the form, the original settings will take precedence over what you set up inside here. So just bear that in mind. If you set this to be Ajax, for example, and you wonder why it's reloading the page, it's because you set that when you created the form. Okay, so with that being said, that's all we need to do. There's nothing else. You can see the forms inserted inside here, the submit button, and our success and error messages are also included. So we'll just save or update the page. And now we're gonna hop over and take a look at a post and see this form in action. Okay, so here's my post. You can see there's the text inside there, the title. And if we scroll down underneath, you can see that I've got, there's the content, there's the title, which replicates exactly what we've just seen. So let's just edit the title. And we'll just put in test edit. And we'll just put some extra space in inside here. There we go. It's really simple. We'll hit submit on there. And providing everything is set up and working correctly, we should now see hello world, test edit, and our edits are all in place. All done on the front end of the site using the free plugin. Absolutely awesome. I get the feeling I'm really just scratching the surface of what this particular plugin is going to be able to do. And I'm super excited to take a little bit more time to have a look through it. But have you taken a look at this? What are your thoughts on it? As you can see, we've got 18 field types, multi-step forms, calculated content. Amazing if you want to put things like, you know, online calculator. So, for example, someone could be coming along and saying, I want this service, this service, this service, and this service you offer. And then you automatically calculate those prices. All done online inside a free plugin backed up by Crocoblock, which you know are creating great tools for us WordPress web designers. Post submit actions, field value generators, the list just goes on, I think. So, what are your thoughts on this? This is only version one, so there may be little bugs or quirks. But knowing Crocoblock, they will expand upon this. They'll take any issues, any feedback on board and tweak the product to get something that's absolutely amazing. So let me know your thoughts on JetForm Builder. Are you going to take a look at this yourself? Is this something you think could be useful for you? Let me know in the comment section below. As always, all of the applicable links are in the description below. And if you've made it this far in the video, well, why not give that thumbs up button a click? It really does help you out. Now, while you're at it, if you like this content, why not also click the subscribe button and slap the bell icon. But if you didn't get value from this video, well, feel free to hit the thumbs down button twice, as that works pretty well too. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tats, and until next time, take care.